Good morning, hello, welcome, whatever time of day it is, you're watching this. Welcome to Icy Straight Point. Um, so we've stopped here for the day, and uh, as you can tell, or maybe you can tell, it's raining. Not unusual, I believe, for this part of the world. So anyway, let's have a look around and see what we can see when we come off the uh, ship. So we've got a broad walk from the... Uh, from the ship takes us into the village. I mean, it's all a purpose made tourist trap. But anyway, let's go and have a look, see what there is to do at Icy Straight Point. Okay, so, at the end of the broad walk, we find a small purpose made area for the souvenirs. And also a gondola ride, which is free of charge, I see, so we'll probably go on that in a moment. Have a look around, see what else there is. There's a free gondola, gondola ride in front of us, which takes us up to the cannery area by the looks of it. Or a paid for gondola ride. called a sky glider. So those cars are red compared to the ones that are green which are free. Which from the boat we can see takes us up to the top of a big hill to give you I suppose a view looking down. Someone's kindly lit a fire for us. Not sure how long that's gonna last in this weather. If you don't want to take the god no I suppose if the weather's a bit better over on the right hand side is a nature trail which I think probably takes you to exactly the same place. So yeah, on a nice day where it's not raining and you don't want a little walk up hill, you can go that way. Okay, so we're uh, off the uh, off the boardwalk. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> so we're off the uh, gondola. Quite a pointless gondola, really. It doesn't seem to go uphill, downhill, anything. It just seems to lift you up and go in a straight line. So I would suggest using the nature walk next time. We'll probably take that walk back. All right. So what we got around here? Some. Uh, Shops, gift shops, obviously the place to do rope course if you want to. Well, and it looks like the zip lines. We're going to follow the sign around for the historic cannery. That's what this place was actually here for originally. I think it was the world's largest salmon cannery in its day, since closed and uh, been converted into a tourist hotspot. So let's have a go and have a look. We did see some whales earlier today from the ship um, swimming by. So we'll probably have a, a look to see if we can see any more later on today. All right, let's go and have a look. So we've uh, found a statue of an orca. Keat Plaza. Keep stand as a reminder of legendary moments in Ice and Strength Breach. Okay. Not too sure of the purpose of it, but if you like your orca statues, this is the place to come. There you go, that's a better view. Well, I'm not sure if anybody lives here or whether these are just Airbnbs you can rent out. This is your view.
And these are the uh, yeah private residence where people live. Okay, mates, finally made it to somewhere that had a bit of cover. So the uh, the boardwalk you walk along is not covered, so if it's raining like it is today, you will get absolutely soaked. So um, I do recommend you bring an umbrella with you. Uh, if you haven't got an umbrella, if you live in Florida, go and buy one. Okay, so we've made it to the, the cannery area. Like I said, in its day, this was the largest uh, salmon cannery in the world, apparently. It's all been converted now, so there's obviously a crab house a restaurant directly in front of me. Unfortunately, you can't walk along this pier. I want to try and give you a, a better shot. But yeah, Hoona Cannery. If you're interested, we're going to have a look inside. Got a museum. Uh, and a, that's probably what we used to do here in restaurants and gift shops, by the way. Let's go and have a look. What you'll do for love? What? Yeah. Oh. It's these little plaques explain how the whole place burnt down in 1944 due to a fire caused by uh, people not smoking salmon correctly. They then caught fire to gasoline barrels, which then spread all the way through the place and burnt everything down. Okay, so when you do walk in, the uh, first 10 yards is the museum. So it's not the biggest museum you've ever been to. Once you're through the uh, museum, you're into the shop. Okay, once you're through the gift shop, you get a salmon shop. And a sign ahead that says, more museum this way. So let's have a look in the salmon shop first. Yeah, so we found the museum area where they show you how they uh, used to prepare the fish. Starting with the fish, takes you through the process. And uh, this obviously uh, filled the cans. Really and weighed. The lids are put on, eventually, we end up with some cans of the. Alaskan salmon. Well, they're then cooked. So, you ever wondered? Salmon's cooked in the tin. So uh, we found the uh, local fire engine. Okay, back outside. So that's walking through the uh, the cannery, which is now gift shops. But everything I picked up actually was uh, seen to be either made in India, Bangladesh, or China. So. I was looking for something made uh, locally, but I didn't see it. I'm not saying there aren't any, anything made locally, but not something I found. So what else we got here? The donuts. Oh, they have tribal dance performances at 10, 1 and 3 and 4. No idea what that would be like at this time in this sort of weather. 
Once again, the rain does. Oh. Now, something more interesting. Probably old uh, fishing boats, I'd imagine, that were used in their day. Left to uh, rot outside now. But it looks like there's a, a footpath and a walk, so I'm probably going to walk along there out to the distance. See where that takes us. Where does it take us? Into this, so this footpath takes us into town. And uh, yeah, so obviously there is a bit more to it than this, so we'll go find out what's actually in the town of Una. I was trying to keep an eye out for whales at the same time. Right, let's go for a walk. So, so far we're about a third of the way along this walk, about, about a mile and a half apparently. Halfway along is the uh, washroom, so that's the thing, toilets. But yeah, so it's about a mile and a half from the start of the walk into Huna downtown. But as you can see, it's still raining. I imagine it's quite a spectacular walk actually when it's uh, sunny. Not sure if anybody's ever seen that, but you do get to see some uh, pretty waterfalls as, we, as you walk along. Just the stuff in the sky. Let's carry on. So about halfway along the walk as we are now, we come across uh, to the graveyard, to be perfectly honest. And then over to the side, it looks like the restrooms as well. So we're probably about the halfway mark. As I said, a bit of proof. It is actually pouring with rain. We've got the brollies up, got the raincoats on, and I'm wrapped up like a like a wet thing on a wet day. But anyway, we'll keep this walking, see what's actually at downtown, uh, see if there's any new interest to actually visit. If not, just stay on the boat, but let's go that way. So if you do decide to walk from the uh, cruise ship to Huna Town, and you get this far, this is the halfway point. Very glamorous. And there's the restrooms. I did wrong earlier. But anyway, that's the restrooms. That's the diesel tanks. And this is the halfway point. And if you're lucky at the halfway point, you actually get to see a waterfall. Well, I'm lucky, I suppose. It depends whether it's raining or sunny. But anyway, that's right behind us. So, after about a 30 minute walk, we, I think I found ourselves in downtown Huna. The church in front of me. That blue building in front of me now is the liquor store. Various houses. Oh, not quite according to that sign in uh, downtown, a little bit further to go. Three minutes further to get to downtown. So we are what I suppose we call the suburbs of Huna. Let's go and see where it's happening. Right, so if you turn this corner, the sign's correct, we hit the centre of Lunar. To be honest, the centre of Lunar looks very much like the outside of Lunar. Apart from we do have a totem pole. So look at the sign, we're uh, through downtown Huna now. Not too different. We have found another totem pole, so we're going to have a look at this one. So 
steps. So it's just past the, uh, the guy that was carving certain poles. If you turn around, there's another gift shop in the harbour. And I think that's about it. Oh, an ice cream store. So I think they're walking out of town this way. Just see what's up around this corner. And it looks like we've come across the, uh, the school. So to the side, there's a school. More town holes, two more. Yeah, so uh, I think that's about as far as we're going to walk up this road. I don't think there's a uh, anything of a uh, local interest to see up here in the rain. So yeah, Huna State School. All right, let's go back. So on the way back, we uh, you get to walk past a bar. And a hardware store. If you have a need for any hardware whilst on board the cruise ship, this is obviously the place to go. So we're making our way back now to the uh, boat. Um, not really much to see in Huna when you get there. There's not much, not much to do when it's raining anyway. As I said, it's probably quite spectacular when it's uh, dry and sunny, if you're lucky enough to have one of those days. But it's nice just to get off the boat and stretch your legs for an hour and a half or so. Even in the rain. Oh, sorry. Even in the rain, it's quite nice to do it as well. Let's have a look. So as we walk back in the rain, one last look at the, uh, the old cannery where we were earlier. We were full of uh, tourist uh, gift shops and restaurants. And over on the on the edge of the headland there, you just see the uh, orca, which we looked at earlier as well. So uh, gives you some idea of where we are in comparison. And sneaking behind the tree is one of the cruise ships. So we're going to make our way back, like I said. And uh, hope this rain eases off. All right. So as we walk back to our ship, we find it's not here, not unexpectedly. We've got to take one of these uh, orange limos back to our ship. It does appear that what actually happens is a. Uh, as the tide goes out, the ships obviously can't just stay tied up to the docks. It's obviously a tidal dock. And so I was off out in the distance in that fog somewhere. So that's where we're off to next. Oh, nearly went flying down the steps. Right, let's join this queue and get our boat back. Oh, wow.